Alright guys, I finished sobbing on the floor over the ending of yesterday's lie, and now I'm ready to break down this week's episode of The Owl House. Once I've finished, I'll be resuming sobbing on the floor over the fact that we've now got a hiatus to sit through until the second part of the season. Yay! Spoilers ahead, obviously. Before I begin though, please don't forget to subscribe. Many of my regular viewers miss out by not doing so. It'll let you know when I release new Owl House content, which supports the channel big time. If you want to help out a little extra and earn yourself some awesome perks, check out my Patreon in the description. Now back to the video. Well, here goes something. At the start of the episode, we see that Luce has finally been able to create a portal to the human realm, albeit not a perfected one. Unfortunately, building it was a messy process, and the ingredients were cobbled together hastily due to Luce not quite knowing how to build it. It's highly unstable, but Luce isn't deterred and checks it out anyway. So, where exactly is the place that Luce ended up? Philip actually did speculate about what might be between the realms, and it seems like this is it. It has a few interesting qualities. For one thing, you can't directly travel from this place to the next. Presumably, you need an entry point on both sides. And this time around, we obviously only had one. However, even the world without a portal is directly observable, through the use of reflections. What's interesting to me is that Luce was actually able to command the dimensional cubes in the first place. Why does this dimension listen to her? Camila! Camila no se da of the human realm? It could be because Luce is very in tune with wild magic. However, as it shows her V for randomly mentioning the number 5, if someone disconnected from wild magic were to command it, I wonder if this place would actually be willing to listen to them. Well, let's get right to the shocking reveal. It turns out Creepy Luce was actually just Amethyst, I mean a basilisk, looking for a place to call home. Yes, she's voiced by Michaela Dietz. She's being typecast for shape-shifting girls with baggage about where they came from apparently. I was initially against the idea of this other Luce being some rando demon from the Boiling Isles due to it not really connecting to any current plot threads. However, I was impressed with just how much this episode advanced the plot. Also, peep that Beta Luce memorabilia in her room. Neat. So first of all, who is this sad basilisk girl? Her name is V, originally named number 5, and she hates Luce's guts, at least initially, savagely throwing away her old stuff. What's the box for me, huh? Just cleaning up a little. Why exactly? Well, she resents Luce for leaving behind her loving mother when she herself never even had a family. She's one of the last of her kind, kept in captivity by Bellows to partake in experiments to understand how their species drains magic. We actually met a basilisk all the way back in episode 13 of the first season. Turns out the inspector wasn't just some random one-off character, but some serious foreshadowing. Viney even notes in the episode that they're meant to be extinct. Now, it makes sense for Bellows to have been studying basilisks? First of all, learning more about this process might have helped him eradicate wild witches. Secondly, he literally drinks palace menescence, so perhaps feeding on witches magic like a basilisk would provide a better alternative. Finally, this may be how he harnesses the magic of the covens during the Day of Unity. So unfortunately, V runs out of magic to drain and needs to find more in order to continue living out her life safely in the human world. Ears! Ears! <laughs> of course, Luce helps her out, suggesting she go look for things Ida has left behind from her visits to Connecticut. She had apparently been frequenting a cafe under the alias of Marilyn. Very interestingly, this is the name of one of Grunkle Stan's ex-wives, who he divorced from from only 48 hours after it turned out she only wanted to marry him to try and steal his car. Stan described her to be the spitting image of Ida, down to the one sharp tooth and the same shirt. She even apparently left through a door into a canyon. This connection is made even more likely by multiple allusions to the Owl House in Lost Legends. Big thanks to Gus in my Discord for pointing this out for me. Anyway, as it turns out through some cool summer camp friends, Marilyn's Texas Hold'em cards had ended up in the museum curator's hands. So we meet the curator and he sucks ass. I can't believe I thought he was hot for a second. He's basically Ronaldo from Steven Universe, except maybe even worse somehow? Just like Ronaldo, 
he gets the truth about things half right, but his theories devolve into crackpot territory. Witches and demons are real. <gasps> And they're all sent from Mars to harvest human teeth to power their time machine! This dude spends way too much time on Reddit. He even has a certificate for being a goddamn flat earther. I actually predicted in my Creepy Loose video that someone was researching witches and monitoring the shack, so that's pretty neat. There's not too much else to say about him, but he does give us a very interesting lore drop. Perhaps the biggest reveal of the episode is that, according to the curator, a witch lured two brothers into the demon realm in the 1600s. We actually see statues of them early in the episode. Now it's extremely likely that one of them is Philip Witterbane, seeing as Gwendolyn mentioned there only ever being one other human living in Bonesboro. It'd be far too coincidental for it to have been some other human. So I wonder, is one of the brothers Philip and the other Bellows? Or is Bellows Philip and there's a brother figure we don't know about? I'm actually pretty convinced Bellows is one of them, as if you recall he said his family was wiped out by wild magic. Luz, this is quite a detailed story. One of the brothers appears to be holding a glyph, suggesting that they were in tune with wild magic. Could he have gotten himself killed due to a wild magic spell going wrong somehow? And Bellows hates wild magic because it got his brother killed? It's all starting to make sense. It's also notable that the other brother has a bird on his shoulder with a striking resemblance to Hunter's Cardinal Palisman. Perhaps the Cardinal likes Hunter because he reminds it of its previous owner. This all begs the question though, who exactly tricked them into to coming to the demon realm. Perhaps it was the Collector. While you may wonder what exactly the Collector would want with them, humans are actually an exotic species to witches, so it makes sense that she would want one for her collection. Finally, while I'm saving my deeper thoughts for a full video on the topic, it was really interesting to have Luz confront her decision to run away from her mother and stay in the demon realm. Before V brought it up, I never even considered that Luz's actions could be seen as selfish, and that moral dilemma is clearly getting to Luz throughout the episode. Camila begging Luz to come back to her was just heartbreaking. Promise me, Luz, please! Especially as coming back is clearly not what she wants to do either. Again, I'll go deeper into the subject in my next video. I'm very intrigued to see what goes down when Luz is once again faced with Camila, who she's now made a promise to return to. If Camila doesn't let Luz stay willingly, Luz is going to have to defy her mother's wishes to her face. That's going to be even more gut-wrenching. Please leave the video a like if you enjoyed it, to let YouTube know my content exists. And again, be sure to subscribe for more awesome Alhouse content. Also, let me know what you thought of the episode in the comment section down below. Be sure to join my Discord, follow me on Twitter, and subscribe to my Patreon. Links are in the description. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.